Check it here. Test, test, test. Test, check. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Okay, great. So uh, um, I'll go ahead and get started here. Well, although I don't know. Um, I've only got one other student on here uh, at the moment. So uh, it could be relatively short. I mean, I was going to see if people had any kind of final questions, wanted to go over anything. Um, I can bring up the fifth assignment um, and look at it a bit. Um, talk some more about implementing the additional uh, uh, um, uh, policy for uh, job selection. Um, so let's see here. I mean, you know, as a reminder, you do have to have everything in by today. I got to get everything kind of graded and turned in for grades by tomorrow. So um, I will look over stuff that I might have passed over that was turned in late um, at the end here. But um, uh, but yeah, you do need to if you have any other stuff, get it in, you know, today. So um, the test five is open. So, you know. It's another announcement, as we've uh, said a couple of times. Um, so we do have, do have to stop a little bit before the end of the week. So you do need to, to start it and finish up the test five as well today, as well as the assignment. So, um, I'll go ahead and bring up my environment here. OK, so another per person join us here. Um, all right, does anybody want to need any clarifications about things or, um, you know, want to ask about uh, the test or assignments or things of those that are here now? Um, if not, um, I can go ahead and bring up the final assignment and see, talk a little bit more about it uh, and see if anybody uh, has a question on that. So, so I can sell it here. So let me go ahead and start up my uh, Visual Studio Code. Close off a little bit here. Clean up some stuff from when we're talking about it on Tuesday. Uh, and we'll just check everything's still compiling here and running. All right. Um, so, you know, uh, last time I did kind of go into how you should get started on the, the fourth part, uh, or the, the, the part after you get the um, member functions uh, finished. So does anybody want me to go back over the, um, the first four tasks here? Any questions about implementing the getter methods or the, um, I was looking over this again, so I think you had to two, um, um, uh, access uh, just a few things in the scheduling system to get started here, mostly mostly just uh, some one-liners for the getter methods. There might have been some more there, depending on the tests. Um, and then there's, what, two or three other, three or four other um, member functions that you have to finish up. So, 
So, <clears throat> if nobody has a question about those things, um, I'm not going to go back over those again unless somebody wants to ask a specific question about those. Uh, maybe I will just, just go over briefly then uh, doing the the last part. So, uh, you know, once you get the basic simulation running, it, it works with the um, uh, the provided first come first serve scheduling policy, you are supposed to implement um, another scheduling policy. So if you get the first four things done, that's worth like 75 or 80%. Um, so, uh, but then the rest of it, the, the last 20 points comes from actually implementing some other scheduling policy, right? So, The scheduling policy that was provided was one of the basic ones, the first come, first serve. Um, so all you really need for first come, first serve is something like a, uh, a queue. And every time um, a new process enters the simulation, the, the new process method should get called for the scheduling policy. Um, and all you need to do is keep track of, um, you know, on the, on the queue. New process come in, you put them at the back of your ready queue for first come, first serve. Um, First come, first serve is not preemptive, so you don't do anything for it. You know, so um, if you look at the, uh, the the new process for first come, first serve, all it does is push. Uh, we have we have a queue of process identifiers, so all it does is push the uh, the, the process identifier um, onto the back of the ready queue. Um, since first come, first serve is not preemptive. Um, all it has to do is, is um, always say false, right? And then dispatching is relatively simple, um, although you know, there's a little check that um, um, if, the, if you're asked to dispatch a process and there's no process currently ready on the ready queue, you should return idle. So tell the simulation that it needs to go be idle um, for the next time step. Otherwise, um, you just uh, take the front of your ready queue um, and return that. So the, these these methods in the API, like like um, um, last week. So for this for this week for our scheduling policy, uh, it's expecting that you're given PIDs um, that you need to keep track of, um, and you return process identifiers when you're asked to dispatch new things. So. so um, <clears throat> We showed setting up the set, the SPN scheduling policy last time. Um, maybe I can try um, real quickly, kind of again, but uh, we'll try a different one. So if we want to do SRT instead, we'd have to do kind of the same steps that I showed last time. So I would normally start by, say, copying Control-C, um, the file in the Explorer here, or however you normally cop uh, make a copy of a file, uh, paste it in there. Um, rename it as appropriate for our new policy that we want to implement. So we'll try SRT here, or maybe how about route route. Route round is a little bit different than uh, source process next. So, um, and while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and do the, uh, make a copy of the source file, implementation file, so that we can um, have both of those. So, you know, using your tools here. Um, this is just kind of in general and kind of knowing how to use your editor or your IDE. So, you know, instead of like doing these all by hand, it's best to learn how to use like search and replace kinds of things. So um, we'll do like a control F, I think it brings up the find, um, but we can also, use that for find and replace. So. Like I showed last time, you should be you should try to be careful here. So it's better not to just do like first come first serve with RR uh, to, to try and do these kind of one by one. So by being more specific, replacing first come first serve scheduling policy with round robin scheduling, um, I'm less likely to replace something I don't want to. But you also ought to watch while you're doing this stuff. So. Uh, but yeah, let's go start replacing these. So, 
Um, and I'm just going to replace it. You know, you should also kind of go through the documentation, um, redo it, make certain it's um, correct. Um, there is one other thing. So we've got these, so, uh, you know, C++ derived from C. If you don't know how includes work, they're rel rel rather primitive compared to uh, more high level languages. So really an include is, is basically just making a copy of the file you have to include by the, the C um, preprocessor. But that makes things difficult because um, the, you, you can very easily have co multiple copies of declarations and things, which will cause compile errors. So you have to do this kind of crufty stuff. You have to um, uh, uh, put in these if def define uh, guards so that only the first time the compiler tries to go through declarations like this uh, will it actually expand these after that you know the, this this guard header guard should be defined and, and, and after that it won't um, make second or more copies of this stuff and try to compile it but anyway if, if you don't change the the, the guard um, declaration there uh, you will also have um, problems so scheduling underscore policy. So I'll go and change all the first come first serve uh, guards to our, our scheduling policy. That. Um, So I must have made a typo in there. It's not finding anything. So let's, um, there we go. So I'll go back up to the first one and go and change these then. So change these all to RR scheduling policy, HPP. Um, and likewise, I probably should have done this first instead of, so, so, so we should do a similar thing on the source file. Um, to modify from first come first serve to round robin. And again, I won't go through and check the documentation here or anything, but um, you know, we probably should go through and reread these and update stuff. Um, all right. Once you, and once you do that, like I showed before, and make certain you save things there once you do that um, you're still not actually so we still haven't added these to the um, build system here um, so you know if you try and rebuild if you look carefully um, you see that just copying those files doesn't actually put them in part of the build so here's the first thing that we had to do to um, um, I had a compile error there. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on there though. Try it one more time. Anyway. Um, so you know I did this on purpose, like I said last time, just to get you a little bit of a flavor of what you have to do for a multi-file project like this to kind of manage your build. So, um, but it's, it's not too difficult, we, but we do have to add it in to the appropriate places, the, the new file that you wanna add into the build system. So this first one is important um, in that this will be the one that um, for your submission process that, uh, actually determines the, the new policy gets added into your submission package. So it gets graded when you um, submit it uh, to my Leo online, right? Um, and, and again, I remind about the, the backslashes here. So this is technically a variable that needs to be all in one line. So we need to continue all these lines. Um, and so we need to add it to our list of sources. We need to add it, add it to the list of um, 
um, object files that need to get built. And um, while this probably won't um, cause you a problem, we really should um, make certain that we specify all the build dependencies correctly. Um, and I had noticed some um, typos last time. So really each one of you, like the round robin scheduling policy that we're adding, uh, basically what you want to do is have the object file be real, rebuilt anytime uh, code that it depends on changes. So, so this is listing the things that the object file depends on. So it should depend on the source file. So if you, if you make a modification to round robin scheduling policy.cpp, add a new function or something, you really should rebuild the thing. Uh, likewise, if the header, um, so if you change the definition for some reason, if you run any declarations in the header file, uh, but also uh, all of our scheduling policies inherit from the scheduling policy base class. So if we change the, the declaration um, for some reason of the base class, we probably need to recompile the object file as well. So, so all these should look something like that. It depends on the CPP and the HPP file of the policy for the object file, plus it depends on the base class um, header file. So um, that should be all you need to do to actually get it in there. Um, so, so, you know, you wanna make certain that this is working before you, um, uh, that it's actually getting into your build system before you attempt to start implementing things. So I know that a compilation error there. I don't know why I'm getting those errors, but uh, but yeah, you know, usually before I before I um, decide that an error is an actual problem, I do a clean build, uh, just clean everything and rebuild. And if it keeps happening after you do a clean build, then it's probably a real error. So I'm not certain why I was getting those. But anyway, um, so you know, make certain that, that you've got this happening before you start trying to implement your um, new scheduling policy. So now we're seeing that Ron Robin scheduling policy is getting compiled as part of the build into an object file. Um, and it gets linked into the test executable um, here, uh, along with all the other object files, and it gets it linked into the sim executable as well, as long, along with all the other files here. Um, all right. So uh, um, so I can talk a little bit about you know um, what you might have to do for uh, in a little bit more detail. So this will become some of maybe the first new stuff that I didn't really talk about uh, last Tuesday or anything here. Um, so uh, some scheduling policies uh, are gonna be easier to implement than others. The simplest are probably gonna be um, like Shores Process Next. Um, um, Shores remaining time might be a little bit more difficult. So, so the main things is that um, um, some of these policies are preemptive, some of them are not. So first come, first serve wasn't preemptive. Um, so don't do anything for the preempt. Um, um, shortest process next is not preemptive. So shortest process next is similar to first come, first serve, but instead of taking the process that's longest on the queue, you need to find the process that, um, um, so, so the one at the front of the queue has been waiting the longest for first come, first serve for like a um, shortest process next, you need to do something a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, you need to look at the total time, the service times for each process. And you want to take the one with the shortest service times, you know, so because of the shortest process next of the ones that are ready to run. Right. So there's various ways you could do that. Um, uh, you could just do a linear search, um, looking at every policy that's currently waiting uh, in the ready queue. I'm sorry, every process is currently on the ready queue and, and finding the one that has the shortest uh total time uh, among those um, um a good solution for choice process next is uh like a priority queue um, although you know that takes a little bit more work up front but um uh, if you can set it up so the priority queue determines priority based on process time um and uh you say you know the, the shortest process has the highest priority 
uh, if you say the way to set that up, you might have to create some helper methods so that you can compare uh, the, the process times two processes. But then uh, if you do that as a priority queue instead of just a regular queue, a, a standard template library, um, then the implementation for round for for sorry for short process next ends up looking the same as first come first serve because you just push it onto the queue when the new process is created and you and you pull pull it, you know pop it uh, off the front of the queue when you need to dispatch but with the priority queue it would pop off the process that has the highest priority which if you can set it up to that high priority shortest process then your implementation looks pretty much the same as uh, first come first serve um, in that case, but there is some extra stuff you'd have to do to create the priority queue correctly um, and, and make it um, prioritize things by um, smallest service time, the, the TS there. Um, so like shortest remaining time then, um, is going to work similar. So remember uh, from our textbook, the short remaining time was um, a preemptive version, really, of first process next. Uh, but we didn't preempt on like uh, some sort of a, a external event, um, you know, like a time size quantum, like we do for around Rob and scheduling. We, anytime a new process arrived, uh, we would preempt. So if you were doing um, short remaining time. you would have to do something to cause a preemption every time a new process happens. So you call any time a new process enters the system. So at that point, you need to set um, a variable or remember so that uh, the next time preempt is called, you would return true and then reset that to be false so that it returns false anytime you're asked to preempt until the next time a new process arrives. So, so something like that. Um, so, so basically preempt is gonna be called every cycle uh, of the simulation um, and you have to return whether I should preempt or not. So this is mostly, makes the most sense for like the round robin. So we could talk about implementing the round robin scheduler that I kind of started doing here. So for, for round robin, um, you would need a ready queue. Basically round robin um, um, is what we implemented in assignment two. So you would need a ready queue, but you're gonna have to add in some extra information to keep track of how many, um, time slice quantum, how many steps uh, the process is run um, while it's running. Um, so uh, the, the preempt is kind of meant to do that. So you, you may not have to really do anything uh, um, like in the process table for round robin. So for example, uh, if you know that the, the time slice quantum for the system is like five time steps that you need to preempt, um, whenever you dispatch a process, uh, you would that means that you're starting a new uh, time slice for that process. So you, for dispatch, you could set um, like a member variable to be zero. And then every time every time preempt is called, that means that uh, a new cycle happens uh, in the system. So preempt should be being called uh, every time step in the system. So you keep incrementing that until you reached the, the system time slice setting. So you'd always return false, but increment um, uh, your count of the time slice uh, and then return true once it's, that's exceeded. So that should cause the simulation to preempt uh, that process and then call dispatch to get the, the next process for round robin, right? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, then if you did it like that, you should be able to use the, the ready queue basically in the same way like we use for first come first serve. Uh, so when a new process comes in, you put it on the back of your ready queue. When you're asked to dis dispatch, um, you know, you, you could check whether there's a process or not ready to run. Um, um, if the ready queue is empty or not, you should just have an idle cycle. Otherwise you would take the, the, the process off the front of that and dispatch it. Um, um, so pretty similar to this, except you'd have to add in a little bit of stuff to keep track of the time slice quantum for the round robin. Um, and you'd have to have you have to have some way of knowing what the um, setting is for for the, uh, the, the 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 time size that's being used for the system. You know, so normally when we do these sim simulations, um, um, we allow that to vary. 
Um, so you have to add that in there some. I, um, um, and I'll talk about that. So there, there's kind of a final thing that I also didn't talk about on Tuesday. Uh, to actually get it added into the simulation, you might have to um, add a little bit of code in there to support creating a simulation that runs with uh, your new policy that you added there. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. But I'm, I mean, source process next probably definitely is the simplest, uh, but to round robin shouldn't be too difficult. Um, um, you know, um, it is, this is set up um, in order to support preemption on some sort of a time slice quantum. So that, that's why preempt is being called every clock cycle. So you can keep track of, you know, whether we exceeded a time slice quantum or not. Um, and then, you know, I mean, you know, the other ones, the only ones we haven't talked about are the, what, the highest response ratio next that was in our textbook or some sort of a feedback scheduler. So you can try those. Highest response ratio next would have some similarity to the uh, shortest process next. So highest response ratio next is non-preemptive, if I remember right. Um, so, you, so you wouldn't have to do anything on preempt, uh, but you would just have to, whenever um, um, you're asked to dispatch because of the, you know, Dispatch is called whenever the current running process is done. Um, so um, instead of taking the process to front of queue, you'd have to calculate the response ratios for all the current processes that are on the ready queue or that are, that are waiting uh, using the same method. So you would have to add in some things to keep track of. Uh, so, so you should be able to use the process table to figure out when the process started, when entered the system. Uh, you, you can ask the simulation what the current time is. So that would tell you how long it's been waiting. Um, and then of course you have the service time from the uh, process table. So those are the three pieces of information if I'm remembering right. Um, um, you could look it up from the tech book, but, but yeah, you'd have to get those information, calculate that response ratio for each process that's waiting and, and pick the one that has the highest ratio in that case. In that case. So, um, but yeah, th that would all, so um, that's more complex than um, um, doing the shortest remaining time. So you have to do something similar, but instead of, of having like priority based on the, the process with the lowest, the, with the shortest time for highest response ratio next, you could do this again with like a priority queue where you have to have something keeping the response ratios updated for the processes uh, whenever you need that. Uh, and then take off from your priority queue based on, you know, highest priority is the one that has the highest um, response ratio for those things. So, so that would give you kind of an implementation for HRRN. Um, all right. And yeah, I, um, I won't discuss feedback scheduler, although, you know, that would be... Um, um, feedback scheduler, uh, if I didn't mention it in the class, I mean, that is uh, the, the, the one kind of schedule that you really kind of ought to understand because, again, for real operating systems, they're normally using something like a feedback scheduler for, for um, job scheduling, right? So, like, when we talked about page replacement, the last unit, uh, uh, most real operating systems, modern operating systems have some kind of a clock, you know, um, and and uh, we use something like a feedback scheduler normally uh, for the schedulers in like Linux or Windows because basically uh, a feedback scheduler gives you kind of a good balance between um, um, you know not favoring short processes or not not favoring processes that are um, I/O bound but not favoring too much long processes either that are um, kind of compute bound. Um, um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of the normal way uh, that uh, a feedback scheduler is implemented. I think our textbook talks a little bit about this is um, um, with like an explicit priority. Um, um, so you might start off with a process with like a high priority and then as it's running, its priority might get uh, reduced, uh, uh, um, you know, um, as it uh, like times out or something like that. Um, but that's, that mechanism gives a similar way of working as uh, the multiple queues that we had in our textbook um, for the feedback schedule. Um, all 
All right, anybody want to ask any questions about the implementing the feedback schedulers? Or sorry, any, the, the scheduling policies or anything? Um, and then finally, I can't remember if I showed this last time or not, but um, um, to get the full thing working, um, you might have to add in a little bit of, of code to um, the assignment five sim to integrate your um, um, scheduler. So, so you you know, if you do do this assignment and do get a, a new scheduling policy created, I mean, I encourage you to to try it out, see if you can get it working from your um, um, from the command line. You know, at a basic thing, you can always run it by hand against the um, uh, so in sim files the um, process table one is the same as the process table for the examples in our textbook. So you should be able to run any of yours by hand if, if you get a new scheduling policy implemented um, on the process table one and see if you get the same schedule as, as the textbook gave for, you know, whatever you get, short process next or first or main time or um, HRRN or whatever. Um, but yeah, in order to do that, though, you do have to add in a little bit. Maybe I did show this. Maybe not. So, um, for example, um, um, I had had some coming out coded there for the kind of thing that you need to do, but. Um, like if we were doing round robin, which I started showing you here, you'd want to add in something so that you support the um, the, the the first um, argument on the command line is supposed to be the policy where we expect to some sort of a string. So you can define whatever you want, but you know, um, um, for first come first serve, we were assuming that you use FCFS to indicate you want to do a first come first serve policy. So like if you choose RR, um, you'd have to check. So if they use RR as the policy name, you'd have to create a new uh, scheduling policy and run it. Uh, so here, I, I did kind of have a hook in here or a suggestion, you know, so um, um, the simulation is, is expecting a possible uh, um, third parameter. So the second parameter is supposed to be the name of the file to run for the simulation. And then the third parameter that you would only really do, need for like the round robin scheduler would be like the time slice quantum. For the simulation, right? So the other um, uh, scheduling policies don't really have something like that that you might want to be able to set for each individual simulation, right? So if you supported that, though, you know, um, um, yeah, I guess that, I think that code was already in there. So it, it checks um, that. If the arg count is three or four, uh, if it's not three or four, that means that you didn't have the right number of arguments. It just prints out the usage message. If it's if it's three, that means you only provided the um, you know the, the the two, the policy name and the um, uh, simulation file to run. Um, if it's four, that means there was that that optional third parameter, the time slice quantum. So it actually does parse that out into from the command line uh, arg v three um, into the quantum variable. So yeah, um, in this example, you could use that, but this would uh, mean that you need to change the constructor a little bit for the round robin scheduling policy. So instead of just using an empty constructor, we are passing in the time slice quantum as a way that you can remember what should be the system um, time slice quantum. So the reason why um, um, the IntelliSense is, is, is complaining about um, this line of code right here is because we probably don't have a constructor that takes an integer parameter um, yet when I copied over the round robin scheduling policy. You know, so um, we could add that in or we could just modify the existing kind of default constructor for round robin to. to expect that you always use that for the constructor for the class, right? And maybe have a member variable to, to remember uh, what it's initialized to. Um,
something like that would allow you then to specify that quantum from the command line, get it passed in whenever you create a round robin scheduling policy, and then remember it as a member variable so that you could use that um, in your um, preempt method um, and, and the other places you need it um, when you're making your scheduling decisions here. So, um, Stuff like that. Anyway, so that's you know that's kind of how these things hook up. Um, ultimately, so so you know from here where we're actually instantiating a new policy, um, uh, we're calling our constructor, um, but then that policy is used when we create our scheduling system uh, to specify which scheduling policy we use in the simulation. Uh, I don't know why that's still, sometimes it takes a little while for IntelliSense to uh, pick up changes that we had here and see if that compiles. So uh, I must have. Uh, looked right to me, but I just didn't save it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't want to debug that right now, so I'm um, not certain what I'm forgetting there, but um, 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 that should be the general idea if we can figure out the syntax error there, the type specifier error there. So, All right. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave that as a mystery here. I'll have to look at that later. So, um, no questions. Anybody want a uh, final chance here? I'm um, kind of running out of things to think about. I just really don't know think about covering here. Um, all right. Well, um, I mean, you can send emails if, uh, if you're working on final things. I had uh, one or two people completed um, the test or the program or both already. But for the rest of you, you know, uh, keep working on it. Send me questions if you have them. Um, and um, yeah, I'll go ahead and end the session then. I'll let you guys go.